The war in Sudan started in December 2018 when protests broke out against the government of President Omar al-Bashir, who had been in power since 1989. The protests were sparked by rising food prices, high rate of unemployment, and the government's decision to cut subsidies on basic commodities. The government responded to the protests with violence, leading to a nationwide crackdown on dissent. Friday's prayers in Sudan ended with calls for more protests demanding the resignation of President Omar al-Bashir, and the calls were heeded in several cities. Security forces again fired tear gas at some protesters. Even hospitals have been in the firing line. In what Amnesty International is describing as an outrageous violation of international law, security forces stormed a hospital on Wednesday. They were looking for protesters injured during anti-government demonstrations in Umdurman, Sudan's second largest city. Bullets and tear gas were fired at patients and doctors. They've walked out on strike in protest. The Sudanese government says it's investigating what happened. Thousands of people were arrested, and hundreds were killed. The protests continued for months, and eventually, the military ousted al-Bashir in a coup in April 2019. It's another step down in Omar al-Bashir's fall from grace. Late on Tuesday, Sudan's former leader was moved from his residence in Khartoum to solitary confinement in Kobar prison on the north bank of the Blue Nile River. It's a jail that al-Bashir is familiar with. It's here that thousands of his political opponents were locked up during his 30-year iron rule. The 75-year-old had been held under house arrest since he was pushed from office last week. He might now have gone, and a military transitional council might well be in place. The conflict in Sudan has taken a new turn in recent months, with the country's two most powerful military leaders turning on each other in a bitter struggle for control. The conflict is between Army Generals Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo. Abdel Fattah Abdul Rahman al-Burhan is a Sudanese army general who is the de facto ruler of Sudan. Following the Sudanese revolution in April 2019, he was handed control of the military junta, the Transitional Military Council, a day after it was formed, due to protesters' dissatisfaction with the establishment ties of initial leader Ahmed Awad ibn Auf. In April 2019, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan stopped following orders and began calling the shots. The man who'd long been one of Omar al-Bashir's reliable generals was now telling him to bring his three decades in power to an end. After Bashir's overthrow, Burhan was sworn in as Sudan's interim leader and was tasked with chairing the Joint Military Civilian Council to steer the country towards democracy. But now he's dissolved the council becoming the de facto head of Sudan. Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, generally referred to as Himeti, is a Sudanese general from the Maria tribe of the Alad Mansur sub-clan in Darfur. Dagalo previously served as the deputy chairman of the Transitional Military Council following the 2019 Sudanese coup d'etat. He may not be an interim president, but young and widely feared, he is one of the most powerful men in Sudan. At 44, Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo is deputy head of the Transitional Military Council. He's emerged as the most prominent member of the group that ousted President Omar al-Bashir. And he's told protesters he's enthusiastic for democracy. We want free and fair elections and for the Sudanese people to pick who they want. At the heart of the crisis is a struggle for power and control between the military leaders and civilian politicians, each vying for influence and resources in a country beset by poverty, corruption, and inequality. However, the military's takeover was met with widespread protests from civilians who demanded a civilian-led government. In October 2021, the situation reached a boiling point when al-Burhan, the Sudanese general dissolved the transitional government and declared a state of emergency, accusing civilian leaders of corruption and incompetence. The move was met with widespread condemnation from the international community, with many calling for an end to the violence and a return to civilian rule. However, Himeti, the leader of the Rapid Support Forces, has refused to back down, 
vowing to defend the military's position and maintain its dominance in Sudan's political landscape. The conflict between the two generals has led to a rise in violence and instability in Sudan, with reports of killings, torture, and human rights abuses on both sides. The UN Secretary General appealed to Sudan's warring factions to observe a three-day ceasefire over the Muslim Eid al-Fitr holiday on Thursday. The fighting must stop immediately. I am deeply concerned about the terrible toll on civilians, the appalling humanitarian situation, and the horrifying prospects of further escalation. The fighting has further destabilized an already fragile country, with civilians once again caught in the crossfire. As the conflict continues, the future of Sudan remains uncertain. The country is at a crossroads, and the decisions made by its leaders will have a profound impact on the lives of millions of people.